The top stories tonight in Y News. The report that death toll left by severe tropical storm Paeng continues to increase, now rises to 154. The National Bureau of Investigation and the Philippine National Police join forces to file cases against at least 10 additional individuals allegedly involved in the Percy Lapid slay and the passing of the alleged mailman June Villamore. The Philippines' inflation rate hits a near 14-year high last October as the country continues to recover from the effects of disasters. And the COVID-19 bivalent vaccines to be available in the country before the year ends. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, the 4th of November, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. Nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Harley Delgado. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will attend the Association of Southeast Asian Nations summits and related meetings in Cambodia next week. Nel Maribohok reports. The post-pandemic economic recovery and transformation are among the priority foreign policies of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in the 14th and 41st Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit and related meetings from November 10 to 13 in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. This is according to Assistant Secretary Daniel Espirito of the Office of ASEAN Affairs. At the top of the list is uh, the post-pandemic economic recovery and uh, transformation. So that would cover uh, food security, energy security, um, digital transformation, and uh, uh, the digital economy, and uh, also climate change, in as much as this is very much uh, related to our uh, disaster management uh, efforts in the Philippines. ASEC Nathaniel Imperial of the Office of Asian and Pacific Affairs said that bilateral talks with other countries are still being finalized. But President Marcos is expected to meet the Cambodian Prime Minister and South Korean President during the sidelines of the ASEAN Summit. Imperial added that all of the meetings of the ASEAN, North Korea has always been part of the agenda and the country's position has always been consistent and clear. The Philippines, he said, have always expressed concern on Korean Peninsula tension. Similar to the position of ASEAN, calling on all parties to resume uh, peaceful dialogue and negotiations and uh, to, to lessen the tension in the Korean Peninsula. And this is of paramount concern to us because we do have um, around 40, 46,500 Filipinos living and working in, in the Republic of Korea. Meanwhile, Yusek Cheloy Garafil, OIC of the Office of the Press Secretary, said that President will also meet with the Filipino community in Cambodia to update them on the programs and policies of his administration, particularly on the protection and promotion of the rights and welfare of overseas Filipino workers. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRMC, recorded 154 deaths due to the onslaught of Typhoon Paeng. Based from the latest data of the NDRMC, it went up to 154. 101 of the said numbers are validated, while 53 are still under validation. 128 are recorded injured and 35 are missing. Affected population rises to 1.1 million families or 4.1 million individuals, 2.9 billion pesos for the recorded damage to infrastructure and 2.7 billion pesos on agriculture. NDRMC said search and retrieval operations on the missing persons continues. The Philippine Coast Guard recognized the importance of modernization in order to speed up relief operations in times of calamity. J.P. Nunez reports why. Philippine Coast Guard Commandant Admiral Artemio Abu emphasized the effect of modernization program in the agency. According to Commandant Admiral Abu, 
it helped out to speed up relief operations especially in areas where relief goods are immediately needed. At present, the PCG continue to procure vessels, air assets, and support facilities that they will utilize in emergency situations and disaster response operations. Uh, this is the beauty of having uh, bigger ships and uh, quite a number of ships. No modernization of Coast Guard, malaking bagay, naramdaman natin talaga na in, in times of needs, nandyan tayo, we are ready to respond. Earlier this morning, two of PCG vessels loading relief goods sailed to Western Visayas. Among them is the BRP Melchora Aquino, which was one of the largest and most modernized capital ship of the agency, while the other one is the BRP Romblon. BRP Melchora Aquino will dock on Central Port in Iloilo to send relief goods to residents severely hit by typhoon, while BRP Romblon will dock in Capiz. The vessels carrying a total load of 120 tons of relief items including rice, canned goods, drinking water, hygiene kits, and medical supplies. It was expected to reach the areas within 24 hours since it sailed off earlier this morning. Meanwhile, PCG also prepares BRP Gabriela Silang, which is also one of their capital ships, to send relief goods to other typhoon hit areas in the country. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Local telecommunications firms announced complete service restoration in all provinces that experienced outages due to severe tropical storm Paeng. The Globe Telecom confirmed that yesterday they have completed all ground efforts to bring back their services in Cebu, the last province to experience disruptions. Meanwhile, the PLDT and its wireless <coughs> subsidiary Smart Communications reported that network services in Leyte, Samar, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, and Orient Oriental Mindoro have been fully restored. They added that relief assistance are in place for subscribers in the province of Laguna. Cavite, Batangas, Quezon, Marinduque, Capiz, Antique, Aklan, Maguindanao del Norte, and Zamboanga City. Authorities intend to filing charges against some people on Monday in connection with the murder of Percy Lapid and the passing of the alleged middleman June Villamor. Dante Amento tells us why. Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia disclosed that NBI and PNP will file cases against at least 10 additional individuals on Monday, November 7 at the DOJ. This is over the killing of Percy Lapid last October 3 and the death of the alleged middleman June Gluba Villamor inside the Belibid last October 18. Rimulia added there are still two to three individuals that need to be investigated. Let, let's wait for Monday. I think that the Monday might be the best time to, to find out everything. So far, the Mabasa family is uh, very grateful also for the, uh, the way uh, the investigation is being conducted. The investigation did, 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 did not stop at one point and even uh, proceeded with the discovery or the, uh, uh, with the finding of other uh, probable persons of interest. Meanwhile, the continuation of the preliminary investigation was conducted this morning over the murder case against the self-confessed gunman Joel Escorial. Attorney Sandoval Kimpo, legal counsel for Christopher Bakoto, also one of the alleged middlemen in the Percy Lapid killing, arrived at the preliminary investigation. Bakoto allegedly called the Dimaculangan brothers to kill Lapid, but he denied the allegation, said Attorney Kimpo. Siya daw nag-recruit, recruit. That is what I heard. Pero din i-deny naman ng client. Yeah. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Former Bureau of Corrections officer in charge, Rafael Ragos, faced cross-examination during the hearing of former Senator Laila de Lima's drug case today at the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court. Ragos's legal counsel, attorney Michael De Castro, said Ragos was firm after he recanted his previous testimonies against De Lima. Attorney De Castro added there was no inconsistency over his client's statement that he was coerced by former Department of Justice Chief Vitaliano Aguirre to make fabricated statements. Aguirre, on the other hand, yesterday denied that he coerced Ragos. 
Meanwhile, residents who have been affected by the severe tropical storm Paeng can apply for a disaster loan. Eileen Cerudo details this report. Residents severely affected by Paeng could receive financial aid through calamity loans offered by Social Security Systems and Pag-ibig. According to Jack Jacinto, Pag-ibig Department Manager for Public Affairs, the agency can provide loans amounting to 80% of the entire contributions of a Pag-ibig member. He explains that a member can apply for a calamity loan if they at least have a total of 24 months of contribution. Ang requirements po ng ating calamity loan ay yung pong application form nito na pirmado ng miyembro at certified ng kanyang employer para sa mga employed members at proof of income naman para sa mga self-employed members. Applicants are also required to submit a copy of their identification card, pag-ibig loyalty card, and bank or cash card. Pag-ibig will also allow payment three months after they receive their loans and it has 5.95% interest rate. For SSS members, they can avail calamity loan assistance and three-month advance pension. Eligible members should also be living in areas under state of calamity. Interested applicants can visit www.sss.gov.ph and log in their account. Ang uh, calamity uh, loan assistance program po, OCLAP, na ilunusan ng SSS ay uh, uh, up to one uh, month salary credit. So kung isang miyembro ay nakapaghulog ng... Uh, uh, nasa maximum uh, monthly salary credit na 20,000, maaari po siya maka-avail ng 20,000 na calamity loan. Nung binipisyo, lahat ng pinibili yung ma-avail sa SSS ay naka-angkla o naka-angkor oh. doon sa buwa ng uh, contribution na binibigay niyo po sa SSS. Aileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Amoxicillin, another medication used to treat infection in children, faces shortage of supplies across the United States. Jane Robles will tell us why, live. Yes, Jane? Giona, the antibiotic amoxicillin, which is usually prescribed to children for bacterial infection treatment, has been listed in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's list of medication shortages. In their list, the oral powder form of amoxicillin was included. However, according to the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, they reported that other amoxicillin in the form of capsule, tablet, and liquid are also facing shortages. While shortage can occur for different reasons, the FDA have stated that they are working with different agencies to limit the impact of such shortage. Currently, the respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is prevalent across the country, and amoxicillin is being used to treat potential secondary infections and not the virus itself. Pharmacists suggest that this may be a reason for the shortage, but is not 100% guaranteed to be the cause. Meanwhile, health specialists are still unsure why amoxicillin is facing shortage. However, shortages are common in pharmacists, says Dr. Matthew Navar of Trinity Health Hospital in Michigan. Parents are being advised to be proactive when informed of the shortage as there are other antibiotics available. Giona? Thank you, Jane, for that live report. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Giona. The Department of Education advises teachers and non-teaching staff to refrain from forming relationships or contacts with students on social media or outside the school environment. Janice Henta tells us why. To promote professionalism in the delivery of basic education program and services, the Department of Education has directed its employees to avoid making relationships, interactions, communication including following on social media with students outside the learning institutions except if they are relatives. Under DepEd Order No. 49, DepEd reminded the employees to always be mindful of the reputation and honor of the organization. 
Vice President and Education Secretary Sara Duterte said there should be clear separation between teachers and students to avoid biases or any controversies among teachers to learners. So namin I relearn and the emphasize ng ating mga teachers and non-teaching personnel ng Department of Education and professionalism. So dapat as a teacher meron talagang line between um, him or her and uh, the learner. Uh, dapat hindi sila magkaroon ng friendly relations with their learners outside of the uh, learning institution setting dahil Nagkakaroon ng bias yung isang tao kapag uh, nagiging kaibigan na niya. Of course, uh, relationships, merong mga problema yan. Duterte cited incidents where DepEd personnel were involved in criminal activities or become victims of crime. And uh, isa ito sa mga nakita namin din ng mga incidents, uh, recent incidents, no? ng mga teachers natin na lumalabas with their students and they're involved in, should we say, criminal, uh, not really criminal activities, but they're involved in crime. It's either nagiging suspect sila or nagiging biktima sila. So, nire-remind namin lahat ng mga teaching and ng teaching personnel natin na dapat uh, unbiased tayo at uh, merong linya between our work and uh, ang ating mga learners. Aside from this, Secretary Duterte also reminded employees to avoid slandering the agency or colleagues online and concerns should be raised through proper channels. Janice and Hete, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, Palawan's three-month fishing ban started this month. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, expects a decrease in round scad fish supply, but there are alternatives that can fill the gap. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Around 92% of the round scad supply in Navotas fish port is coming from Palawan, according to the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR. But from November 1 this year to January 31, 2023, there is a fishing ban in the area to allow the fish to repopulate. Yifar said there has been a remarkable positive result for the last seven years since the fishing ban was implemented annually. Uh, ayon sa pag-aaral ng National Fisheries Research Development Institute, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, pagtaas ng porsyento ng spawners ano yung uh, mga mangitlog na nagalunggong uh, doon sa uh, sa bahaging yon ng uh, Palawan but in Agora market just a kilometer away from the Botas fish port locally grown round scud is not available fish vendors complain the high price of frozen round scud ang karamihan po kasi mga galunggong ay lumalabas mga frozen na po eh. ang pagbuo ng galunggong ay 240 kilo Kung meron man pong sariwa, mahal naman po. Hindi po kakayanin dito sa palengke. But BFAR said, there are other type of fish like tilapia and milkfish that can augment the expected decrease in the supply of round scud. Fishing ban will also be implemented in Visayan Sea on November 15 and December 1 in Zamboanga Peninsula for the sardines. BFAR clarifies that only those commercial fishing vessels are banned and the small fisher folks are not covered. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BIFAR, warned the public against consumption of shellfish collected in several coastal areas in eastern Visayas region for toxic red tide or the paralytic shellfish poison or PSP beyond the regulatory limit. In a bulletin, the agency enumerated the affected areas including San Pedro Bay of Base in Samar and the coastal waters of Giwan in eastern Samar while the Cancabato Bay in Tacloban City and Irong Irong Bay in Katmalogan City, Samar, remain positive of the toxic microorganism that causes PSP. 
Bifar said that all types of shellfish collected from the following areas are not safe for human consumption. They reminded the public to refrain from gathering, selling and eating of shellfish meat from the affected areas. Meanwhile, the agency advised that fish, squids, shrimps and crabs are safe for human consumption provided that they are fresh and washed thoroughly. They added that internal organs such as gills and intestines should be removed as well before cooking. The Philippines' inflation hit a near 14-year high last October as the country continues to recover from the effects of disasters. An economist, meanwhile, believes inflation will ease in the coming months, but interventions must be made to address the high prices of commodities and services. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, reported a 7.7% inflation rate in October. This was higher than the September figure of 6.9%. PSA Undersecretary Danny Smapa explained this is due to accelerated increase in food and non-alcoholic beverages. These include prices of vegetables, meat, and sugar. Also contributed to higher inflation are restaurants and accommodation services and household expenses such as electricity, water, gas and other fuels. MAPA noted that this is the highest inflation rate since December 2008 during the global financial crisis which posted 7.8%. He added that higher vegetable prices in Metro Manila was due to the effects of Bagyong Karding. Inflation for November may still increase due to the effects of Bagyong Paeng. Uh, para sa isang mamimili, katulad nyo, uh, I wish na ito na yung pick, ano? but of course as your national statistician na nakikita natin yung mga datos, medyo may push tayo dito sa food uh, prices and of course itong uh, recent typhoon ay uh, hindi makakatulong. Ano? So uh, there is, a, I could say from the using language of statistics, substantial probability na pwede pang tumaas uh, by next month. Vegetable vendors and market goers alike also feel the effects of higher prices of commodities. Di man kami talaga kumikita kasi matumal din at saka ano, walang kalakal masyado. At saka talagang mataas ugat talagang yun ang gulay ma'am. Sinungaling na lang sila pagka sinabi nilang mura talagang mahal po. Dati okay okay pa. Ngayon hindi na. Dati yung budget namin 200. Ngayon 200 kulang na halos dinobli na. Ito sobrang hirap na ma'am kasi sobrang mahal na mga presyo ng mga Ano ngayon, mo. According to economist Michael Wickafort, typhoons create huge impact in the country's inflation, especially in food inflation. Give it a few months, uh, mag, mag ano, ulian, magpaktanting season uli, tapos hanggang sa mag-aani. So, doon pa lang talaga mag-normalize. Actually, nakakagulat din na medyo mataas na impression ng bibigin. O yung big picture natin, doon mo 7.7. Ang tagal lang natin hulong nakita yan. Pag hinayaan yan, tataas yan ng tataas yan ng tataas eh. Kaya kailangan talaga rendahan din yan. Di manage yan, no? Uh, kinokontrol talaga yan ng central bank. So ang pinakatun nila ay yung pagtas ng interest rate. Yun na lang yung kapalit mas nagiging mahal humiram. However, Wickefort also emphasized the need for the country to veer away from heavy importation and empower the local production of agricultural products to address higher food inflation. He added that there is a need to look into stabilizing peso and exchange rates of currencies as these are factors affecting inflation. Yung kasama natin yung India as an importing country, yung iba natin kapitbahay net exporting country. So pag nag import tayo, karamihan doon pambayad din US dollar. So ultimano, pag nagbayad tayo ng import, eh 15% ka agad yung pagtaas ng presyo. So mas mahal na mag-import. Kaya nakakaambag yun sa inflation. Rika Fort is optimistic that the country's inflation will tone down next year with the easing of COVID-19 restrictions in the country and lowering of prices of commodities in the world market. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News, Andreas Q. We serve the people. We give glory to God. More than 30 million people face the heightened severe weather threat as the cold Arctic air meets the autumn warmth in the United States. Mavi Delphine will give us the details live. Yes, Mavi? 
Jonah, the Storm Prediction Center warns that two major storm systems moving in from Canada is set to trigger a tornado threat in the southern regions, while the western states will experience heavy snowfall in the next 48 hours. An enhanced risk level 3 out of 5 of severe storms has been issued for 9 million residents in Dallas and Fort Worth in Texas, as well as parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Another 27 million people in surrounding areas such as Kansas are at risk level 2. Temperatures at Salt Lake City in Utah has dropped below freezing as the first snow of the season fell, making the winter weather alerts and hard freeze watches remain active. Meanwhile, snowfall is expected to continue across Arizona, Nevada, and Utah and then begin to push into Colorado, Nebraska, New Mexico, South Dakota, and Wyoming. According to the Weather Prediction Center, while much of the central U.S. is suffering from relatively dry and warm conditions, excessive rainfall rates could lead to flash flooding, especially across the Arklatex region. Back to you, Giona. Thank you, Mavi, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Giona Pravado, live from London, United Kingdom. Good evening. The Light Rail Transit Authority, or LRTA, reminded the public that their free ride for students in LRT Line 2 will end tomorrow, November 5. Students would need to start paying LRT fares per ride starting November 6. However, students can still enjoy availing the 20% discount on every train ride, according to LRTA. Students would only need to present their school ID or proof of enrollment to the passenger assistance office or ticket booth. The management said more than 1.5 million students benefited from the LRT free ride program. The LRTA has implemented the free ride policy on August 22. Meanwhile, COVID-19 bivalent vaccines will be available in the country as soon as December 2022. Vaccine experts, however, claim that vulnerable groups are still given priority for vaccination. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Two manufacturers of COVID-19 bivalent vaccines are coordinating with the Food and Drug Administration for application of Emergency Use Authorization, or EUA. Pfizer's application is still under discussion, while Moderna have already submitted the dossier to the FDA. But it may take a month for the process of the evaluation of application for EUA, excluding the actual procurement and shipment of the vaccines into the country. We affirm na ang COVID-19 vaccine uh, would be, would, was, and it still is our game changer. Go Negotia founder Joey Concepcion earlier says private sectors are eyeing to buy 10 million doses of bivalent vaccines. But vaccine expert panel chairperson Dr. Nina Gloriani explains that the procurement should be well planned by the government to avoid wastage. Usually, meron tayong vulnerable groups. No? So, sino yan? Unahin natin ang healthcare workers at ang mga elderly at yung may mga comorbidities. The health experts, however, advise the public to take any available booster shots while the bivalent vaccines have yet to be procured. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The city government of Manila has announced the implementation of some restrictions around two universities where the 2022 bar examinations will take place. Manila Mayor Hani Lacuna Pangan, through Executive Order No. 48, ordered a liquor ban, prohibition of ambulant vendors and noise control measures within the 500-meter radius of the San Beda University in Mendiola and the De La Salle University along Taft Avenue. Based on the order, the liquor ban will be imposed within the vicinity of the venues on the following dates, November 8, 12 midnight to November 9, 10 p.m., November 12, 12 midnight to November 13, 10 p.m., November 15, 12 midnight to November 16, 10 p.m., and November 19, 12 midnight to November 20, 10 p.m. For ambulant vendors, they are prohibited from November 8, 12 midnight to November 10, 12 midnight, November 12, 12 midnight to November 14, 12 midnight, November 15, 12 midnight to November 17, 12 midnight, and November 19, 12 midnight to November 21, 12 midnight. 
The ban includes videoke, karaoke, loud sound systems, speakers, and all equipment emitting loud or disturbing sounds. Moreover, persons or groups of persons causing loud noises within the vicinity shall also be banned. The exam will be held on November 9, 13, 16, and 20, with around 10,000 aspiring lawyers to take the bar. Our Kasambahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verses 1 to 2, it says, My son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments, and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. the reasons behind the news November 4, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harley Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.